<sighs> Today's topic is how to maximize your catch play game. And this is Tips with Trev, the show where I give developing baseball players some easy tips to end their slumps faster and become a superstar sooner. Let's do it. All right, as pitchers, we play catch almost every single day, and the vast majority of those throws are wasted. Yes, wasted. Why is that? Well, a lot of people don't even think about what they're trying to accomplish when they're playing catch. They're just out there warming up, you know, to go do their bullpen or to go do, you know, whatever, whatever they're warming up for. If you're a two-way player, you might be going to take ground balls, so you play catch to get ready. And, this is not how you should approach playing catch. So the first tip that I have for you is you want to warm up to throw. You don't want to throw to warm up. There's a big difference. Warming up to throw looks something like this. I sit in the hot tub. I do some breathing exercises and activation exercises. I do some thoracic spine mobility, roll out my hips, do all that stuff, get my body loose. I go and I do some wrist weights. I do. Uh, the shoulder tube, I throw some weighted balls, I'm slowly building into it. By the time I'm done with my prep, I'm fully loose. I could probably go throw a baseball 85, 90% of my max right away with no problem. That's warming up to throw. Throwing to warm up looks like this. Uh, let me do a couple of these. I already got a baseball in my hand. Uh, my arm doesn't feel too good today. Ah, uh, that doesn't feel too good. Mm, man, I gotta get my arm loose. Man, my back kind of hurts. Ah, okay. Now you're 30 throws into catch play. You feel like crap, and you've created bad patterns. You've wasted 30 throws. You've wasted your time, and you're not getting anything out of it. You're probably getting worse. So that's the first thing. Warm up to throw. Don't throw to warm up. The next thing, once you've warmed up to throw, tip number two, is to be athletic in your catch play. The vast majority of times, guys are out there and they're just like, mm, okay, because they haven't warmed up, so they can't move very fast or throw very hard because their body doesn't feel good. So now your lower half's getting lazy, your hips aren't rotating first, your shoulders are rotating before your hips, you're pulling off, you're kind of slinging the ball. It's lazy, it's bad. You're creating bad habits. Don't do that. Be athletic. That looks like I'm gonna make a quick throw. I'm gonna act like a catcher and boom, pop up and throw. Great. Next one, I'm going to do a pickoff. So I come set, turn and pick. Uh, I'm going to feel the ball like I'm a shortstop, backhanding ball, boom, throw. All right, just move your feet, do a jab step, pretend like you're a quarterback doing a drop, throw the ball. Move your body so that your body gets used to accepting different forces and moving. If your weight's on your left foot, how do I get my hips in a position and my torso in a position where I can throw? If my weight's on my right foot, if I'm facing backwards, like... These are all things you can do to teach your body how to actually move and be a very robust system. If you only ever practice throwing out of a, out of a pitching delivery, out of a stretch or a windup or something like that, then as soon as you have to throw somewhere else or as soon as the mound is a little bit different or as soon as there's a hole or it's a little bit wet or whatever, you're not very good at compensating for that because you haven't trained your body to be robust, to handle a lot of different inputs and still accomplish the goal, which as we're talking about it right now, is throwing the baseball. So teach yourself to be athletic, move your body in a bunch of different ways, and that's gonna maximize your catch play game a little bit more. The next thing you can do on that to stack on top of it is tip number three, which is to train your eyes. No one talks about training your eyes, at least in a how-to type of way. They say, oh, you wanna look at your target, great. Well, how do I practice that? Has anyone ever told you like how to practice looking at the target? It seems simple, oh, just look over there. But what happens when you're in your delivery and you kind of turn your head and you can't see and you're only looking out of one eye? Only one eye can see the target. Or when your back is, when you're having to feel the ball and you're having to whip your head around to try to, you know, throw the ball uh, in a bunt play or something like that and you don't know how to acquire a target. So what are some ways you can go about doing this? You can throw with one eye open. Close, you know, one eye, then the other eye, train your eyesight. Pick a target that you want to throw to. See how long you can keep your head stable on that no matter how I move my body, if I'm in a throw, like can I keep my head and my eyes focused directly on the target? Keep track of these things, like how often am I hitting the target? Did I lose sight of the target that time? And what happened when I did? Okay, man, I missed high and arm side, but I know that I didn't really even pick up a target when I'm throwing. 
if you get lazy in catch play, you're just throwing it to your partner, but your partner's kind of a big like area. Because if your partner catches it over here or he catches it over here, he still caught it. You didn't make him go chase the ball, so that becomes a good throw. That's not a good throw. You missed by three feet, maybe. Or you didn't even have a target, so you're just wasting opportunity to train yourself on what you're going to be doing on the mound you know, or what you're going to be doing in the field when you have to throw the ball over to, to first base or something like that. So train your eyesight. Find ways in, while you're being athletic, after you've warmed up to throw, to actually acquire a target and train your eyes as well. And the fourth thing I have for you on how to maximize your catch play game is to compete. Create a game out of it. Create, you know, compete with your buddy. How often can I actually hit you in a certain spot? You know, there's, uh, this game is pretty well known. Torso being one point, head being two points. If I hit you right in your head, you know, I get two points. If I hit you in your torso, I get one. If I miss, if I'm below the waist or outside the body, it's zero. Who can get to 10 first or who can get the most during the catch play session? Um, another way to do it is to, you know, have you start your delivery. This is something that I used to do with Clevenger all the time. Have him start his delivery and as he's going into his leg lift, move the target somewhere. So that he's in his delivery and he's having to acquire a new target. One thing this does is it distracts you from your inside thoughts about your delivery because as soon as the target moves, your eyes go to that and then your attention goes to that and so your body has to function completely naturally and then you have to try to hit that target. So how many times can you start your delivery and your partner can move his glove and you can still hit the glove? Like that's another game you can play. There's a lot of different ways you can make this fun. You can make it competitive, but you wanna get something out of every single one of the throws. So if you're gonna make 40 throws in catch play, then can you train yourself? Can you, can you put in very high quality 40 reps? Can you get 35? Can you get 30? Most people don't get any in catch play because they don't have this process and understand what they're trying to accomplish. So to recap it, number one, warm up to throw. Don't throw to warm up. Number two, be athletic. Number three, train your eyes. And number four, compete. Do those four steps, you're gonna get a lot more out of your catch play, you're gonna to get to your goals a lot quicker. So on that note, thank you guys for watching. It's been great, I love hanging out with you guys. If you could do me a favor, subscribe, leave me a comment, like this video, share it with your friends. If you think someone can get some help out of this or would like the channel, I appreciate all my subscribers already. I'm trying to get to 100,000 by the end of 2020 so I can help a lot of different people. I can get my information out there as a resource to young kids who are trying to be better baseball players or who look up to big leaguers. So if you could do me a favor, let other people know this channel exists. Leave me a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And that's all for today. I will see you on Friday.